everyone, it's Kevin here, back with another video, and I just hit 100 subscribers! Yeah! Thanks everyone for supporting my channel, and let's see how fast we can get to 200. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about this sick new drone I got, the DJI Mavic Air. For those of you who don't know much about drones, this is uh, a drone that can shoot 4K video, has a gimbal so it's stabilized, and has like an insane two mile transmission range so it can go pretty far and it can go really high and it takes some great footage. Um, when I got the drone, uh, the DJI onboarding process for the app and the drone itself isn't super straightforward. So in this video, I wanna talk about five things I wish I knew about the DJI Mavic Air before my first flight. And hopefully uh, I'll go beyond that initial logic, like don't fly in the rain or something like that. Number one, get to know the DJI app really well. In order to go beyond basic flying, you need to use your remote control paired with your phone with the DJI app installed on it. And I highly recommend before your first flight, spending like 10 or 20 or 30 minutes even exploring every single menu item, uh, all the icons and the entire layout of the app. So what do the icons mean? What is in every single menu? What do all the options mean? And getting familiar with all these options will allow you to react quicker in any emergency in the air and just know how to fly the drone better in general. I still need to do this more myself. Um, I'm still exploring the app more and more every day, but definitely before your first flight, get to know the app as well as you can. Number two zones. If you live in the United States, the FAA has three types of zones all across the US. You'll have your restricted zones, your warning zones, and your authorization zones. DJI has synced up with all of FAA's zones, and basically if you're in a restricted zone, which is like around an airport or a prison or something, you can't take off period no matter what. And if you're in an authorization zone or a warning zone, You'll have to go through a couple steps to pretty much like unlock that zone in order to take off. The first time I tried to take off in an authorization zone, the app just told me at the top in the notification bar that I was just not able to take off and I thought that was it. I would not be able to fly that day. I was really unhappy. But all you need to do is attempt to take off and you'll be prompted with a message. And using your DJI account, just follow the steps which are like putting your phone number in, um, confirming your phone number with an SMS, and then just agreeing to a couple of things uh, in the app. Just click those, go through the process, and you'll be able to fly in no time. So it's definitely confusing the first time, but after that, it'll be much smoother. And your drone will stay unlocked for, I think, 24 hours. Again, DJI is not really clear with any of this. Additionally, the FAA might put temporary flight restrictions or TFRs in place, and those could span huge areas on the map. All you need to do to unlock those is follow the same steps as above. Number three, recording a precise takeoff point. If you're flying outside, the drone will always be using GPS to track its location. When the drone takes off, it'll know exactly where it took off from, and when you click the return to home button, it's gonna land around that area. But it's only accurate to a certain degree. GPS signals probably have like a couple feet of error. What you can do is record a precise takeoff point instead and it'll land in the exact same place. The only way I figured out to record the precise takeoff point is to click the takeoff button in the app. The drone will hover around like 15 feet or something like that and you'll be prompted with a message asking you if you want to record a takeoff point. And if you say yes to it, it's gonna use its downward facing optical sensors to pretty much just snap an image of the ground exactly where it took off from. And when you click return to home after your flight, it'll come back to around the area, orient itself in the correct direction and align itself exactly to what that image looked like that it stored for its precise takeoff point. This allows you to land the drone in the exact same place or on a platform or something that you had made for the drone. Number four, converting files to HD. 
When I try to transfer my photos and videos from the drone directly to my phone for the first time, I noticed that they were super low quality and really grainy, and I was kind of disappointed by the camera of the drone because I had heard that it was so good and on my phone it looked really bad. What I found is that you actually need to convert files to HD within the DJI app. So what you need to do is select which pictures you want to convert to HD or videos and on the bottom left hand corner you'll see a convert to HD button. Just click that, it's going to process these photos into their full resolution and then you'll be able to download it to your phone. And after that, your photos are going to be much clearer and so are your videos. This process actually takes quite a while for videos, so what I would recommend is just plugging uh, your SD card or your drone directly into your computer and you'll be able to transfer the full resolution files directly without any conversion or anything. Number five, and this is a really important one, and that's to plan your shots ahead of time. If you're trying to get serious about your drone photography or videography, then I suggest you plan out every single shot that you want to take before you even take off. And the reason for this is because the drone has a limited battery time and um, you don't want to waste your own time as well. What I suggest is like getting an idea of three or four shots that you want to take with your drone before you even take off. Maybe you want to, you know, just get an overhead one looking down, or if you want to get like a gimbal panning up. I mean, I'm still new to this as well, so I don't really know that much either. But if you don't plan your shots out ahead of time, you'll find yourself flying back and forth for fun, and suddenly the remote control will give you the low battery warning and you'll have to come back home. So plan your shots ahead of time, use your battery efficiently, and use your time efficiently. So in conclusion, I think DJI definitely could have done a better job with this whole onboarding process for beginners and especially for people who have never flown a drone before. Um, but hopefully this video gives you more insight into uh, some of the basics of flying the DJI Mavic Air. All right, guys, that's it for now. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Or if you want to help me reach 200 subscribers, give me a subscribe, turn notifications on. You won't regret it. That's it for now. There's more drone videos coming soon. And that's a wrap. Don't let go. Chasing a dream. Play you do. Don't let go.